Ocarina of Time was released on Nintendo 64 in 1998 and has been re-released a few times since. If I personally wanted to replay this masterpiece, I would either play it on the Wii Virtual Console with the Redux mod or I would play the excellent remake on the 3DS. But on the 3rd of December in 2021, Ocarina of Time was decompiled. What does that mean? When a game gets decompiled or reverse engineered, the game's ROM gets dissected and gets turned into pure code. Because the fans do this on themselves without any leaked code, and every line of code is written by them, it lands in a legal grey area so it's technically not illegal. With this decompiled game code, the doors open for ports on all kinds of platforms. Out of the Ocarina of Time decompilation project, two PC ports were born, Open Ocarina, which uses a Nintendo 64 emulation plugin for its graphics, and the Ship of Arcanian, which does not use any plugins. Now, which one should you pick? I personally prefer the Ship of Arcanian. The Discord community is very active and this port has more features and enhancements than Open Ocarina does. Something else that I prefer is how easy it is to install. That being said, I don't mean any disrespect to the Open Ocarina port and its community, as it's still very impressive and took a lot of hard work. So from here on out, I will only be talking about the Ship of Arcanian port. So before we install the port, there are two different builds you can choose from, a master build and a development build. The master builds are stable and get updated once every month. If you want a stable experience without the newest extra features, this should be your choice. The development builds are less stable but get updated often and will always include the latest enhancements and features. However, I must add that it is not intended to be used as a daily driver for casual users, but it's more of a way to playtest new features. So now, how do you install the port? The master builds can be downloaded from the official Ship of Arcanian Discord server. On their GitHub you can find their Discord invite link and the stable builds can be found under the downloads topic. Here you can also choose to download the PC port for either Windows, Linux and Mac OS. Another reason to go to their Discord is to keep updated on announcements and previews. To get the latest development build, you will find a link in the description to the website builds.shipofarkinian.com. From here, we go to develop-rachel and download the latest build for your operating system. Now we just need one more thing, a compatible ROM file. Inside the SOH zip file we just downloaded, you will find a readme file. Here you can find all the information you need to get the port up and running. There are two compatible ROM versions. The PAL GameCube ROM file, which is not recommended because it could give you more glitches, but it's easily and legally obtainable. Using a modded Wii, you can rip the ROM file from the GameCube disc. The second compatible ROM, which is the recommended ROM for Ocarina of Time, is the debug ROM that is not Master Quest. Now, downloading this ROM online is illegal, but it's the most compatible and stable ROM to use on this PC port. I am not allowed to give a link or distribute the ROM file, but I will just say this one thing. Google is your friend. Remember that it's the debug ROM that is not the Master Quest ROM. Now that you have the build you desire and the compatible ROM file, we can go ahead and get the game up and running. After unzipping the downloaded build, open the application called OTRGUI. Here you have to choose the ROM file and let the OOT.OTR file be compiled. When it's done loading, you can open the SOH.exe and start playing. In case you are using the development builds and want to update to a more recent build, you simply drag over the SOH.exe file over from the new build. In case that doesn't work, you should regenerate your OOT.OTR file using the new build OTRGUI.exe. If your game still does not work, this build might just be broken and you should go with an older build. Now that the game is running, how do I use it? There are two shortcuts you really need to know about. Pressing the left alt plus the enter key together will make the game full screen. And besides that, pressing the F1 button will open the enhancements menu. Inside the enhancements menu, you have a lot of options you can enable and disable on the fly. Here you can also configure your controls with a settings window and if your controller supports it you can also calibrate your gyro control. You can scroll through the menus and will find a ton of cool stuff. If you don't know what some of them do, simply hovering over them with your mouse will give a small explanation of that enhancement. Now I will be going over some of the most important and coolest features available to you that I recommend. 
The original game ran at 20 FPS, but now you can play this game in up to 250 FPS. On the enhancements menu under graphics, set your jitter fix to your desired FPS. Then go to the enhancements and set the same FPS under frame interpolation. As you can already tell, the FPS gets increased using frame interpolation, which basically means all the game logic remains untouched, but the game gets rendered in a higher FPS using interpolation. I hear a lot of people not liking this because it looks weird, but please believe me, after playing it in a higher FPS for like 10 minutes, it will be hard to go back. It really does feel more responsive and looks so much better once you get used to it, so really, give it a try before deciding it looks weird. Another cool feature is FreeCam, which allows you to control your camera to look around. First we should enable FreeCam under Enhancements and then we go to Controller, Controller Configuration and we have to select a controller. Now you can choose which buttons you want to use to control the camera under Camera Stick. I think a lot of people will love this feature to be available as it makes the controls feel a little bit more modern. Oh, and under controller, you should enable all the D-pad support features except for the pause and file select. The D-pad as equip items feature will allow you to use your D-pad as C buttons, meaning that in total you have 7 items you can always select. On top of that, you should go to enhancements, gameplay and enable assignable tunics and boots. This will make the water temple a more enjoyable temple. Staying here in gameplay, we can go to time savers and enable everything if you've played this game before and don't need any tutorial information. If it's your first time playing, I don't recommend enabling no force navi, fast chest, fast drops and fast ocarina playback as you might miss useful information if you enable these. Under enhancements and fixes, enable everything except the first two and in restoration you should enable a red ganon blood. If you're already a master at Ocarina of Time and you think the game is too easy, then you can go into difficulty and make the game much harder. One more thing under enhancements that I recommend is enabling disable LOD, disable draw distance and Kokiri draw distance. These settings will make things that are in a distance look better for you. Lastly, you can use the randomizer feature to make a randomizer safe. You have a ton of settings on how you want the randomizer to be and there's also a built-in item tracker. This is good fun for someone who is bored of the story and wants a challenge. Besides the features that I just mentioned, there are a ton more that are good fun and enhance your game experience. Cheats are built into the game to make the game easier or something fun like climb everywhere cheat. I do recommend looking through everything and testing some things out. The Ship of Arcanian team really made an amazing PC port. Besides playing this port on a PC though, you can also play it on the Wii U and on the Switch. In the Discord you will find the downloads and how to install it. I also have a video on my channel showing you how to install it on the Wii U and how it compares to the Wii U Virtual Console release. In the future it might get other ports to different consoles like the PS Vita. And that brings my video to an end. I would like to thank everyone who was involved in the PC ports and is doing the Zelda community a huge service. This is my favorite game of all time and I really am enjoying the PC board. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you will give the PC port a shot. Thank you all for viewing and subscribing to me, I really appreciate all the love I've been getting. See you next time.